Hello, St. Dorothy's Camp Universe. It's Ethan and Spencer here. Um, we are so, so glad to be with you for this last day as your virtual chaplains. We have had a busy, good week. First day of the week, we talked about how the last six months have been hard, and we did some Ignatian examine on the last six months of time to help us wrap our minds around what's happened. On Tuesday, we introduced the idea of sacred space, right? How, how special St. Dorothy's is. Um, but we invited you to build altars in your own homes to invite that special feeling, that holy place and space into your own home. Yesterday, Spencer talked about the story of the transfiguration and how when we have this sort of glorious mountaintop experience that for many of us feels like camp, at the end of the week we say, can't we just be here all year? Can't we just stay here? And so what does it mean for us that we can't have gone to the mountaintop this year so we don't get to have that? So today we're going to talk a little bit more about that idea, um, about sort of the distinction between things that are holy and special and things that are really quite mundane. <clears throat> now, one of the things that is true is that every camp person has a superpower. So work with me on this. Every camp person, every camp goer, every camp counselor, camp staff person, camp director, camp chaplain, camp alum, if you are related to camp, you have a superpower. And that superpower is making something special out of something that is really quite ordinary. Now, what do I mean by that? Camp is special, not because we've got a whole bunch of MacBooks or Playstations, not because there's gold and Teslas or celebrities there. The stuff of camp is really quite ordinary stuff. It's like pencils and markers and umbrellas and flashlights and water bottles and decks of cards and hula hoops and door signs and bunk beds, all very, very normal things. And we all just work together to make those things seem special to us. We use very ordinary things to make the time that we have together holy. Now, it may seem funny to stand back and say like, gosh, I just had like the best time ever with a deck of cards and a bunch of my camp friends. But we're gonna hold on to that idea for this presentation today. Now, in my own life, in my own camp experience, in my own work as a youth minister, I've taken this superpower with me from camp into other places. My one favorite example is I had to figure out a thing, a special game to play for this Halloween party that we were having at the church. And I got like seven of those plastic pumpkins, a piece of plywood, some spray paint, some tennis balls, a big piece of cardboard, and I made Halloween ski ball where you like roll tennis balls up a ramp and they go into the plastic pumpkin. And it's like the funnest thing ever. And I looked like I was out of control when I went through the checkout line with that particular set of goods. Now, Spencer, have you done anything like that in your own work? Yeah, I think that's been one of my favorite learnings of working at camp um, is that. So I can think of a couple of times, one in particular, where we were trying to figure out what to do to entertain campers for an afternoon of rain plans when everything that we had initially planned to do needed us to be outside. And the only things that we had left over in the supply room that we hadn't used were goldfish that were supposed to be tomorrow's snack and a few containers of shaving cream. And so the counselors decided to cover folks um, folks face or their head, they got to choose or their arm, whichever it was in shaving cream. And the rest of their team would toss goldfish and see how many they could get to stick. And whoever stuck the most goldfish won. And it entertained <laughs> them inside for hours. It still entertains me to think about. Um, 
so there's this special thing, right? That when you're at camp, you just get to make the decision to look around at what you have in front of you and to decide that what you have is fun, that it can mediate your experience of friendship with your fellow camp counselors, and that these very ordinary things are all that you need to have a good time and to have God show up in the space. Now, the thing that is true is that the superpower that you have as a camp person is also a superpower that Jesus has, that God has. Jesus was very, very good in all of his life and his work and his travels and his ministry at using very, very ordinary things to get done. Can we both hear that airplane? We're like two blocks away from each other. There's an airplane up there. Um, using very, very ordinary things to accomplish his work. So again, Jesus didn't have you know, the latest technology. He didn't have a bunch of money, right? He didn't get to place an Amazon order every time he needed to get something done. He just used what he had around him. And so we have examples from the Bible where Jesus found 5,000 hungry people and said, what do I have? And he had five loaves of bread and two fish, and it worked for him. There's a story where he encountered a blind man, and I bet he thought for a second, and he ended up spitting in the, in the dirt and making mud out of it and rubbing it on the man's eyes and healed him. There's even a story where Jesus was walking through a crowd and a woman who was sick and hurting grabbed the hem of his coat and her just grabbing that handful of fabric is what healed her. And so Jesus's ministry and his miracles even played out with dirt and cloth and bread, right? Very, very normal things. So our invitation to all of you for the rest of this summer, for the rest of this time in camp, is to tell yourself, I have a superpower. And that superpower is equal parts imagination and ingenuity and simply the decision that you get to make to decide that things that are ordinary can help make an extraordinary moment for you, right? That you don't need anything special in order to have a good and fun and friendship filled and faithful time, right? By yourself or at home or with your friends or at camp, wherever you are, you have that superpower. So in just a minute, we're gonna invite you to go look around your house to find what some of those objects might be for you that have helped you live into that superpower this summer so far. But Spencer and I have a couple of examples. So <clears throat> I will say first is this box of crayons. It cost me $3.99. And when I look at this box of crayons, I do not simply see crayons, I see the particular medium by which I can enact my imagination, right? I can make things real with just these crayons. So I see a lot more than just these crayons. I also have this jar of pesto. The only thing that I have to say about this pesto is that this is not special. It was $2.99 at Safeway. It's frankly not that good. <laughs> And I just decided one day, it was the only thing I had in my pantry. Well, I mean, I had other stuff, but it was like the most actionable item in my pantry. And I just looked at it and said, I'm gonna decide that that's good. And so I sort of stared at it for a minute and was like, pesto, okay, pesto, yeah. And like hyped myself up for it. And then I really enjoyed it. And I haven't stopped enjoying it since then. And every time I go to the grocery store now, I buy three jars of it. And it really does it for me. So frankly, as a superhero, pesto's in my tool belt. Spencer, what about you? Um, it's hard to beat pesto in a tool <laughs> belt, frankly. However, I'm going to try. Um, <laughs> I brought with me my coffee mug. Um, 
So one of the things that I decided in this time was that I was going to mark the beginning of a new day and mark it as full of possibility. And the only way that I knew how to do that was to decide that making coffee would be my like hardcore morning ritual. So I can't wait to get up and push the button on my hot water heater and get my coffee rolling and then take my mug and pretend like I'm walking out onto my patio, which is really just an emergency escape and water my potted plant vegetable garden which has brought me such great joy over the last four months. However, I will say the only fruit I have yet produced is one cucumber. And it is still, yes, one, one, one cucumber total. Um, it is still one of uh, my favorite moments is picking up this mug and walking out to what I like to call my patio, even though it isn't, uh, to see if maybe this will be the day where that dang red pepper plant is finally ready. Um, today still wasn't the day. Uh, and so one of the things um, that Ethan was talking about is that I have been thinking a lot about the moment in creation where God breathed life into dirt and said that it was good. And so the moment that I get to pour coffee into this mug and walk out and do a thing and decide that it is good. And the truth is that you all get to do that too. And so we're excited to see the good things um, and the, the things that you as a superhero are, are breathing life into um, in this time. You know, I think one of my favorite moments from the Old Testament is when um, the Israelites were wandering around in the wilderness and God rained down pesto. <laughs> Jarred pesto to be very specific. And the Israelites said, come on, we've had enough of this jarred pesto. Give us, can you please give us some basil? Okay, with that, um, <laughs> I'm going to ask you to go up, get up, walk around your house, look around, see like what is the object that is your pesto or your coffee mug or your cucumber or your crayons and bring it back. And we're going to talk about what those objects might be. Um, let us say thank you um, for letting us be your virtual chaplains. This has been as fun as it has been new to us and we are grateful for it. Thank you, St. Dorothy's. Um, we love you, St. Dorothy's. <clears throat> I'm gonna close this in a prayer because it's always good to pray. So let us pray. Welcoming God, giving space for creation to return your love. Make us apostles of the open table, a place of hospitality to challenge the world with the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, who offered himself for us. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll see you in a minute. Bye. <laughs>